Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we thank you for your people that you have gathered here by your power. We thank you for all those who are connected to this program. We thank you for your grace which is mighty and strong. Thank you because you've never lost a battle. And thank you because it is written that every enemy that comes against us shall flee from before our face. And if they come against us in one way, they shall flee in seven ways. Therefore, this morning, Lord, I decree upon your children here that any altar standing in the way of anyone here, any altar using your name to divine evil with a sevenfold amen. Father, I command that altar to crumble in the name of Jesus. Every wind of stagnancy blowing against your rising to shine. Every wind of delay blowing against the manifestation of your glory. Every wind of disturbance holding you down from fulfilling your destiny. Every wind of witchcraft blowing against your lifting up. I pull them down in the name of Jesus. I pull them down. I put 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 them down. Light your amen roar like thunder. I put them down. 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 In the name of Jesus. Beloved, this particular prophetic proclamation needs a 40-fold violent earthquake amen and as many as who participate in that amen will certainly have testimonies makapote seteli kayabo shanda I decree that any power that scatters what you have gathered through battles, through losses, through attacks, through robbery, let those power die in the name of Jesus. Somebody is breaking through with the amen. Father, we thank you. Continue to lay your hands upon us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. amen. Let's have a seat as we take our Bibles. And open to the popular Genesis chapter 32. From where we derive what is on the altar here. What happened? And how it manifested? Genesis 32. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. 
We are looking at what I call confronting your Esau. Isaac had two sons. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Jacob stole the blessings of Esau by deceiving his father that he was Esau. He came to his father to steal his brother's blessings. And that time the father asked him a question. What is your name? He lied. He said, I am Esau. The man was confused. He said, This voice this is the voice of Jacob. What the, the hand is the hand of Esau. So he trickishly, with deception, collected another person's blessing. It was his most tragic mistake. That mistake followed him till he died. I'm praying for somebody here. May you never make mistakes that will pursue you to your grave. <laughs> right, your heaven roar like thunder. There are some mistakes that people make. You correct it, and that ends the problem. There are some mistakes that people make. It cannot be corrected again. It follows the person, pursues the person to the grave. This is why you must pay close attention to what we are saying this morning. Confronting your Esau. Jacob ran away because Esau was a wild man, a hunter. He was afraid that Esau would kill him. He ran away. We take it from this chapter 32. After running away for 20 years, he decided to come back home. Because where he was, he was cheated, he was dealt with terribly. They change his salary ten times, they exchange his wife. He decided that the best thing is to live here and go back home. He's going back home now. But with very great fear, he had Esau to confront his brother, whom he had cheated. Genesis 32 from verse 1. And Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them. So this is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my Lord Esau. My Lord Esau now. The person that you cheated. Thy servant Jacob said thus, I've sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen, I have asses, I have flocks, I have men servants, I have women servants. I've sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in his sight. Scared of that Esau. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to thy brother Esau. And also he is coming to meet you. And 400 men with him. 
400. When he cheated Esau, it was only Esau that he cheated. By the time the repercussion will come now, there have become 401 people that were going to confront. The Esau that he left behind that he thought was gone had multiplied 400 times. So Esau was now ready to go, to go and confront him with 400 men. But, verse 7. Then Jacob was greatly afraid. Who wouldn't be afraid? <laughs> because he was only coming with his wife and his servants and his children. And this man is coming with 400 soldiers. And Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Then he took a decision. So his brain, his brain, the 419 brain is still there a little bit. Then Jacob was greatly afraid, distressed and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and earth and camels into two bands he divided the people who was coming with into two groups <laughs> and said if he saw come to the one company and smite it then the other company which is left shall escape and Jacob said, Oh God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said unto me, Return unto thy country, and to thy kindred, I will deal well with thee. I'm now worthy of the least of all the mercies, and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I pass over this Jordan. And I am becoming two bands. Now he prayed. He now started praying. Deliver me, I pray thee. From the hand of my brother. From the hand of Esau. For I fear him. Lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou said, I will surely do thee good and make the, thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And Elijah that same night and took of that which came to his son a present for Esau, his brother. They had quickly divided his, his group into two. Strategy number one. Strategy number two. Now package a present. 200 she goats. 20 he goats. 200 herbs and two and 20 rams. 30 milch camels with their calls. 40 kind. 10 bulls. 20 she asses. 10 falls. And he delivered them into the hands of his servants. Every drug by themselves. And said unto his servants, Pass over before me. Put a space between drove and drove. Himself didn't go. Gathered those large presents. Allow the servant to go. These servants don't know who he saw is. He didn't tell them who he saw was. He just pushed them forward. Go, go, go. And stayed at the back. Divided them again. So don't follow each other too closely. So that if you have to run, you will run. And he commanded the farmer saying, 
When Esau, my brother, met thee, I'm asking thee, saying, Who's at thou? Who that goes down? And who's at this before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob. It is a present sent unto my Lord Esau. And behold, is behind us. And so commanded thee the second and the third and all that followed this drove, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when you find him. And say ye, moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that went before me. And afterward, I will see his face. Paradventure, he will accept me. So, whence the present over before him? And himself. Lodge that night in the company. And he arose up that night and took his two wives and his two men, women servants and his seven sons and passed over the fort Jabok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over the land. He sent his servant, everybody sent them away. <laughs> and Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the all of his tie. And the all of Jacob's tie was out of joint. As he, as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go. For the day break it. So I will not let thee go. Except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? It's interesting that that's the first question the resting angel asks him. Because the last time somebody asked him, What is thy name? Was his father. And he said, I am Esau. Whereas it was Jacob. Now the question came again. If he had failed that question, that would have been a problem for him. And he said unto him, What's thy name? And he said, Jacob. 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 And he said, okay. That answered correctly. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel, for as a prince has that power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou asked after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penel, the sun rose upon him. And he halted upon his thigh. He now began to limp. From that encounter, he couldn't walk properly again. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the tire unto this day, because it touched the hollow of Jacob's tire and the sinew that shrank. Chapter, chapter 33 and Jacob lifted up his eyes and look and behold Esau came and with him 400 men and he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids 
He put the animals and the children foremost and Leah and her children after and Rachel and Joseph in the most. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And this son ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. The fear that he had to confront Esau was resolved the night before when he wrestled from Jacob to Israel. This wrestling we're talking about, a lot of people don't understand it. It is not possible for a human being to be, to be wrestling with an angel. The angel is a supernatural being. It's not that kind of rest you think about. The book of Hosea gives us some information. Hosea chapter 12. From verse 2. Hosea chapter 12. From verse 2. Gives us an idea of what was happening that night. Jacob was in trouble. Jacob needed prayers. Prayers are in dosages. Dosage. 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 So the level of trouble, the level of enemy harassment, the level of the attacks decides the dosage of prayer needed. The dosage of prayer needed for Jacob to get out of his problem was, was meant for a minimum of seven hours to get out and so the angel just kept him there praying hard crying all those I will not let you go is with prayer only prayer can hold down those kind of heavenly beings not wrestling and I'm sure the angels will be praying quietly like, don't get tired don't get tired don't get tired. Come, 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 continue, 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 continue the, continue the prayer, continue the struggle, continue until he got the dosage right. A lot of people have trouble. They pray half the dosage of prayer needed. And then they, and then they stop. And they wonder why the problem does not go. The dosage you have applied is not enough. So that's why you kept him there. Kept him there. Some trouble needs five minutes prayer. Some one hour. Some seven days. Some even for one month. But dosage to get the dosage to get those things right. If somebody has malaria or is sick and they prescribe drugs for the person, if he doesn't use the right dosage, the infirmity remains. Hosea chapter 12 verse 2 the Lord has also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his dreams, will he recompense him? He took his brother by the heel in the womb, but by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angels and prevailed. He wept 
and made supplication unto him he found him in Bethel and there he spoke with us so what was happening was serious prayer serious weeping serious supplication beloved it is important and even compulsory for us to have the power of God in our lives our lives must generate the power of God a particular level of power is needed to get out of certain situations it is a lamentable tragedy to stay as the footmat of the enemy because of lack of power but you see real power is spiritual power spiritual power I know a lady who employed the house help the house help misbehaved Madam is a Christian. She, she goes to church. But the house has misbehaved. She decided to discipline the lady. And she was using the whip on her. The lady made the small girl made a pronouncement. She said, I arrest your hand. Say, arrest my hand. Oh, do okay. Arrest my hand. Are you, are, you, are you police? Are you a policeman? <inaudible> Madame did not understand. <inaudible> when she slept, <inaudible> by the time she woke up, <inaudible> that hand has swollen up. <inaudible> Almost three times the size of the left hand. <inaudible> she couldn't leave the hand she couldn't go to work then she understood that she had employed a house help that was stronger than her you a believer use your hand to discipline somebody and now that hand has now swollen up you cannot use it it's a lamentable tragedy that that could happen people, people come to church there is people come to church they receive knowledge they receive prayer they receive anointing but they cannot translate it into power one great secret to generating the power of God this is what you saw Jacob going through we call it pressure conversion you can translate every pressure upon your life to power there are people listen to me this morning if not for the enemies that pursued you you will not be a mountain of fire if not for the trouble you're facing you will not become a prayer warrior the enemy that thought they were doing you evil they only succeeded in pushing you to become a prayer warrior and now they can't handle you anymore every arrow the enemy fires at you can be translated into power every pressure upon your life can be translated instead of you crying and weeping can be translated into power every storm in your life can be translated into power every problem in your life can be translated into power what converted Anna to a prayer warrior and made her a strong woman it was a pressure upon her life every harassment of the enemy can be translated into power the problem of Jacob 
was translated into power. The way of power sometimes, the way God makes people powerful sometimes is to create challenges that will introduce pressure upon your life. And then you begin to pray. And then you accumulate power. The problem that confronted Jacob threatened his life. Threatened his life. I was a brother living in a house. Live with two of his junior brothers. Uh, they pray some ice cream prayer at night and sleep. And every night, this huge rat will come into the room. Do whatever the rat wants to do. We eat money, we eat food, we even bite them. Sometimes they see the rat. They will pursue the rat, the rat will disappear. They didn't understand. But one of them understood and started praying. Started with 12 to 1. Spring from 12 to 1, 12 to 1. Spring. He noticed that when he started that, those prayers, that the rat will still come to the house, we'll go to the kitchen, deal with the other two brothers. But they left him alone. The rat left him, but the rat kept coming. Any attempt to kill the rat, the rat disappears. Increase the prayer to two hours. So you can see what I mean. That the pressure, the pressure that was created for him made him strong. Made him strong. Increased to two hours. Then increased to three hours. Then it was when the prayer became three hours per night. One night, he was able to kill the rat. Huge rat. And threw the rat into the dustbin. And they all went to bed. In the morning, somebody was knocking the door. Was the oldest man on the street. And the old man knocked the door. They opened the door. And he said, Have you seen a rat? The brother pointed at the old man. Dad, are you the rat? The man did not answer. He went home and died. I'm praying for somebody here. Every conspiracy of the night, every spiritual animal, whether in the dream or in the physical, whether you are seeing them or you cannot see them, assigned against your life with a sevenfold amen. I kill them now in the name of Jesus. The problems that confronted Jacob threatened his life. He's going home. This is, a, this is very dangerous. Waiting at home is his brother whom he had cheated. A strong and violent man is going home. To meet that brother. He's going to, to meet his aging father, whom he lied to. 
Jacob is going to an unfriendly territory. Trouble and death were waiting for him at home. Esau was a wild man with a reputation for aggression. Esau fights wild animals. So if he's, if he's come to fight, Jacob was no match for Esau. But then, he was left alone. He turned that pressure to power with the seven hours prayer meeting that it made. And it brought him victory. How do you have power with God? Until you have confronted your Esau. You cannot enter into your promised land. And Esau was waiting for Jacob. Listen, beloved. No matter how clever you are, no matter how intelligent you think you are, no matter how you think you can masquerade and hide, no matter how bright your plans are, no matter how wonderful your schemes are, no matter how attractive your plans are, you need to confront and deal with your issue. When you are ready to be serious with the issue of your promised life, when you are ready to be serious with your destiny, when you are ready to be serious with your eternal purpose, you must confront your issue. No matter what you are, <laughs> no matter what you have, until you have dealt with your issue. You remain in exile. No matter who you are, until you confront that your issue, you remain in the wilderness. As far as the purpose of God for your life is concerned, for 21 years or so, Jacob believed as if there was no Esau waiting for him. He did not share the secret with anybody. Before you set into God's promises for your life, before you find your spiritual and physical identity, you must confront your Esau. No matter how many years you have pushed your Esau aside, you have to deal with him. Our Esau, different. Our Esau differs. The Esau of Jacob started many years ago with a pottage and stealing blessing. So this morning before we pray, we need to think deeply. What are your issues? Anytime you, you are to seriously possess your possession, the power that will say, sorry, sorry, you have not said to me. Sorry, sir. You want to become great. Huh? We want to receive the blessing. The power that will say, sorry, sir. You have not resolved my situation. That is your issue. You may cut a tree off. You cut a tree to the level of the ground. And you think it's all over. But you have left the stump behind. This and you cement the floor. You built a house there. All of a sudden, sometime later, you see a crack in the floor. The tree, the trunk the, that you buried, the trunk you buried, the stump, is coming out. What is the stump telling you? You have not said to my case. You are looking away as if I'm not here. I am waiting for you here. You are crying, oh Lord, I want breakthrough. Oh Lord, I want power. Oh Lord, I want to be great. 
I will not pursue you. I will wait for you at the gate of that promised land. I will wait for you at the gate of your inheritance. Esau will always wait for you at the gate of your inheritance, at the gate of your promised land, at the gate of your destiny. What is the spirit of Esau? The spirit of lack of self-examination. No reflection on spiritual things. You hear God's words, you don't build on them. You started warfare from the womb, you did not address the war. You, are satis you satisfy the loss of the flesh when you were very young and you think that's the end of the battle. You are practicing bread and butter Christianity. You think that will help your situation. What are your issues? You need to identify and, and confront them. Maybe a woman sent you to school. And after she has spent all her money to send you to school, you abandon her and run off with another woman. Esau is waiting for you. Maybe you run away from your husband who financed you through school. You started business for you. You married a new one. Listen, you have left an Esau <laughs> at the back that will wait later. Waiting later at Esau. I know a brother we went abroad to study together he had a wife and three children in Nigeria but when he got overseas we came there we face our studies but we find him going about with one white woman white woman and they got married. He moved into the big house of the white woman. Well, all of us were living in our student hostels. He was enjoying himself. We did not know that he had told the white woman that he was not married. So that one thought that uh, we have found your husband. It's a very serious matter. The one day, a letter arrived for the man. You know the Yoruba have a proverb. So it's every day for the thief. One day. For the owner. As clever as he was. That day he forgot that letter on the table. The white woman took the letter. And started to read. My dear husband. The children greet you. For the first time, the woman knew that he was married. She was, she was angry. What happened? The man came from uh, work. And the woman showed him the letter. Oh, he was very clever. So that's how people write in Nigeria. Even when they are not married to you, they say they are married to you. They call everybody my husband. The woman took a gun. Shot him dead. Shot herself. That was the end of Ezekiel. Esau. Caught up with him. 
Maybe you are owing some people money. You did not pay. Oh, they say, come and pay your debt. You are saying, Jesus paid it all. Esau is waiting for you. Maybe you have done some hidden abortions. <laughs> nobody, nobody knew. They don't write it on your head that you have aborted children. We don't know. But know for sure. As an come waiting. You need to deal with it. Perhaps you've been working with a fake certificate. Nobody knows the certificate is not genuine. Yes. Esau. That you have to deal with. You are here. You slept with your cousin. You slept with your niece. Stab with your nephew. Your parents don't know. Nobody knows. But it's in the record of heaven. And it's an Esau waiting for you. If you don't deal with that Esau, somebody is coming to do the same thing to your own children. You are very clever in school with contraceptives. So, so, so you don't get pregnant. Nobody knew that you're a wicked girl. That's an Waiting for you. You have secret children outside your marriage somewhere. And the one you are bringing to church, bringing to all of us, we don't even know that you have children all over the place. It's an Esau that is waiting for you. Until you deal with that Esau, you are joking. You <laughs> must tell each other the truth. When you are at the edge of your privilege and blessing, at the gate will be Esau saying, you have not dealt with my kiss. You see? <laughs> Deal with it. Esau is telling as you are growing, me too I'm growing. Jacob left at the age of 40. Came back later. The Esau that he did not approve also grew. Esau was now come with 400 men. When Jacob offended Esau, Esau was just one man. Esau had increased. If you like, you may postpone your meeting with Esau. But in several years later, it will be more sophisticated, more complicated, more difficult, more serious. Your Isa may be a habit. A sin you never confessed. A, a, a pregnancy that you dumped the baby somewhere, you didn't tell anyone. They are having some secret sex that nobody knows. You may be doing all those things. You've, you've done them. You've, you are reading them. You think nobody knows. But you have not made atonement for them. You have not confessed your sin. You have not done deliverance about the situation. You've not cancelled whatever voice is speaking against you from that Esau. Esau is still in place. You may, you may have that Esau. And you are singing, I am moving forward. I am moving forward. Esau will say, yeah, move forward. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting here. I'm waiting there. This is a serious matter. Esau will cry, I am waiting for you. This may be an addiction. So no matter how great you are, at the edge of that promised land will lay Esau confronting you and telling you, you have not dealt with me. It was after God released power into the life of Jacob. 
he had power with God it was then he could deal with his, his after the wrestling God said okay <laughs> you have power now you can go and face Esau all the battles have been fought with your wrestling match you did here that Esau is that part of your life where you are resting with God the area of your life God is asking you to surrender the area of your life God is asking you to change God dealt with what was wrong with Jacob in the morning Jacob could not walk straight to his brother again he got to that spot walking like this that's how he walked to the place but when he made the encounter now he began to walk like this that's how he was able to confront his sister he was now a broken man so this morning you need to sit down and think is there any hidden thing you've not opened up before the Lord is there any secret thing you are hiding that you've done are you working with a fake certificate? Are you the kind of woman who grabbed the husband of your friend? You come to church and you are living in cleverly concealed sin. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Are you giving the money meant to your family to strange women, but the woman at home knows nothing? Wife is hungry, children are hungry, and the small salary you have. You are using it to take one marine girl to take away to, 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 to eat. Something is wrong with you. Your head is not correct. So, the Esau will wait. And if you don't deal with that Esau, we'll deal with you. Bow down your head. Sorry. In case you are here this morning, you are not born again. <laughs> you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. Do so very quickly now. Before we go into today's serious prayers. The prayer today is a prayer of fast forward, rewind. It's a prayer to break the power of yesterday. But if you see, you are here. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I know that God has something for me this morning. Find a way very quickly to this altar now. Jesus is waiting for you here. Sophia, the altar, I congratulate you. Just bow down your heads and say what I'm going to say after. Me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. Keep them standing by your power. Lay your hands upon their lives. Do wonders in their destinies. Today they've surrendered their lives to Jesus. Let their lives no longer remain the same. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Prayers are about to start. They are deep prayers. They are vocal 
satanic prayers. There are prayers that your hand will know you are praying. Your legs should know you are praying. It's not a long praying session. But the few minutes you are going to pray, let your concentration be in heaven. Let your spirit connect to the power of God. If Jacob ever lost concentration in that battle, he will not win. But as we pray this first prayer, if you are in this meeting, on occasions, occasionally, you wake up crying. You find tears in your eyes as you wake up. Please find a way quickly to this altar and be on your knees. You wake up crying. Find your way to this altar and be on your knees. Everybody will pray this book. Prayer. This is not a day to negotiate. We need to face the strong man of Esau confronting our lives. The first prayer I want you to cry to heaven is to receive power. The kind of power that Jacob received. Power. You need that power to confront the Esau and to receive the power. It's not a gentleman's prayer. Your body must know you are praying. Your spirit must know you are praying. Everything in you must know you are praying. Everyone must know that you are praying. Can you shout this loud and clear? Power! Confront my Esau. Sisters, can I hear you shouting? I believe these sisters should be able to do a lot better than this. I still think the sisters can improve on that. Brothers, let me hear you roaring like thunder. Everybody together now. Makate sate la kaya bo shendera bo santa. Ribo sopole kaya bo shendera bo kopola makanta raba santa. Oh, put your mouth, oh, put your mouth, oh, put your mouth, oh, put your mouth, oh, put your mouth. Something is happening already. Something is happening already. Receive the power, the power, the fire, 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 the power, the fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at this altar begin to shake your head vigorously. Shake it well. Certain things have to go this morning. That's it. That's number one. Number two. Three. Four. Five. They're coming out. They're coming out. Enough is enough. Shake out the spirit of death and hell. Shake out the crown of the familiar spirit. Shake out every plantation of darkness. Shake them out. Shake them out. Shake them out. Shake them out. Say any power 
challenging my shining. This is a serious prayer. Can I hear you shouting this? You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. Put your mouth up, put your mouth up, put your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. With a loud voice, shout this loud and clear. Every spirit of struggle and failure. It's the spirit of struggle and fail. Can you shout this loud? I bind you now. In the name of Jesus. You cannot hide. Thank you, Jesus. name we pray. Now this prayer. Hmm. This prayer with its attendant results it's not something you go put. Ancient fight. Ancient fight of my father's house. Ancient fights of my father's house. I am not your candidate. Can I hear everybody shouting it loud? Raise your voice a little bit more. Now shout it loud and clear. Death! In the name of Jesus.
Jesus name we pray let there be silence now please don't say anything when I want you to talk I will ask you to talk father Baba, your people are gathered here and there are so many people you are showing so many things you are showing this morning Makate Satelaya Baka De Setenda Father, I'm praying for this woman. Being breastfed by an old woman in a dream. Right there where she is. Whatever she has eaten or swallowed. I command those things to get out of her. Uh, don't say anything. Just be quiet. When I want you to say amen, I'll ask you to say amen. That woman being breastfed by an old woman in the dream. What you have eaten or swallowed. That is poisoning your system. I command it to go through the mouth, through the nose, through the mouth, through the nose, through the mouth, through the nose, through the mouth, through the nose. And Father, this person, I say, massive old dog, a massive hole, dog, inside the center of the place you are trying to build. Something is happening now. Those who dug the hole, they are falling into their pit. That's right. The power of God is coming upon you where you are. A three persons. Your mothers covenanted you with the waters. So your blessings are banked in the waters. Now I lose the chain of the waters from your legs, from your hands, from your legs, from your hands, from your waist, from your legs, from your hand, from your waist, from your legs, from your hand, from your waist. The heavy load placed on your head that is giving you constant sickness. The load is going back to the senders. Right there where you are. The hand of God is coming upon you. As that load has been shifted away from you. If you are that person here, the sickness that killed your mother, the sickness that killed your father, is already in your body. Find a way to this altar now and pray with anger. It will be a tragedy if you go home with that sickness. But the way you pray is the way that would direct what happens. This is a very, very serious matter. Whether you are sick or not, please pray this prayer we're going to pray now. Let your voice be the loudest. Even if the sickness is hiding, this prayer will touch it in this hiding place. With a very loud voice, say, Generational infirmity. <laughs> Is that the loudest you can shout it? <laughs> Dead.
You cannot stay. Continue, 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 continue. Generational infirmity. I am not your candidate. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let that be silence. Father, thank you for these angels that are moving about. Let them now begin to deep hand into the life of anyone, everyone here. Any hidden generational infirmity. Let them begin to expel them. Expel them. Expel them. The one in the head be expelled. The one in the eyes be expelled. The one in the heart be expelled. The one in the blood be expelled. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's rise to our feet, please. And stretch your two hands forward. And let your amen be the loudest here. Father, I thank you for your children who have attended this service. As you stretch forth your hands now, let the angels of God place something in those hands that will catapult you to the next level. In the name of Jesus, everywhere you go this week, there shall be favor. What has been stolen from you shall be restored sevenfold. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all the tragedy and sorrow left in this year is minus you and your family in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. The Lord bless you from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Father, all the prayer requests are answer them by fire. Lay your hands upon your children. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And let us share the grace in fellowship. Surely. Shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Ten miracle receiving, hallelujah, let's go.